G'day everyone. Now today we're talking all things about hedges. Yes, it's a little bit further from my heart, but it's important for many of you because you've got small parcels of land and you need to create a bit of a screen or privacy without becoming too intrusive in your own property. So what hedge to plant in what part of your garden and what conditions it needs and how big they grow? Let's talk all about them. I'm starting with a hedge that I've forgotten the name of. Can you believe that? I've been pruning it for so many years and it just slips my mind. Now, if you recognize it, please feel free to comment below of the video. Otherwise, if I do remember before the video, I'll, t I'll have it written up there. But let's talk about it. Now, this will grow at about six meters tall, has a beautiful white flower. Where I'm standing now, it's about two meters in depth. It gets pruned about five times a year. So it's a great hedge. Uh, Portuguese laurel? No, it's not that, but anyway, I'll keep working on it. It will grow really fast and it is susceptible to scale, so you get sooty mould on it. It will grow well in a part shady position. So this gets a little bit of morning sun, but I've got some around the corner here that get very little sun and they still thrive really well. So if you've got a good space in the garden because it needs the width, you can grow this quite freely and it will cover a double storey building if you need to screen off your neighbour's windows. Now you can see how wide it is, and I can assure you, every time it grows, these things here will pop up about eight inches tall, and that's just like an overnight growth spurt that it has. You can see it's already starting. This is about a week and a half since we last pruned it, folks. Come around here, you'll see scraps on the ground everywhere. Here's an idea. We had one that died and look how it's filling in nice and quickly. So that can be done quite quickly and effectively without little fuss. That's the sort of growth you'll get on a plant every three months. It looks like English box, but it's much, much faster and stronger than English box. I don't mind it, but it does need to be away from the house because the hardest thing you can do or have to do with this plant, <laughs> sorry, the dog's playing ball with us. Just leave the ball alone. The hardest thing about this is actually trying to get to prune where it's rubbing on the house. It's not like your Petosporum plant. Now that's another wonderful hedge you can grow, very popular. That will not grow onto a fence line or the house. Whereas this, it will keep growing into the house line and that's where you constantly have to prune back. There's an example there on the window where it's doing it there. This part's been pruned but we can't reach on the window and it's starting to curl into the house and curl back up. So it doesn't get restricted by boundaries. That's the only thing about that. If you've got a big area and you can allow them to grow well, well, you can go with a conifer species like this. Castle Wallen Golds and Greens are really good to grow. They are susceptible to canker and that's the dieback. You'll find, and I've had this experience and we spoke about this in the past, you get a bit of dieback and it looks like that basically along the edges. Here we go. A little bit like that canker. Now, that's only because of the prune that we did on it. So that could be from our tools that is causing this bit of dieback on the edges. But the canker itself can, can kill the plant and it can spread through from one plant to another. It is irregular watering and not enough airflow. Now, you can see we've got a mop top going on at the moment because we can't reach up there. We're going to prune that off. These need to be pruned probably twice to three times a year when they've got a fine growth on them. If you let them grow too much, and that's what's happened there, they get woody, so you'll find hedges like this that are pruned regularly really nice and dense and soft and luscious, whereas this one is a little bit sort of rough on the edge. So it's a bit of a coarse sandpaper look by comparison to your, your, your fine grade. So pruning these on a three, well, three times a year is good, but they need to grow tall. You can't keep these down to two metres or three metres. Four or five at least in height is what they need, and they need at least two or three metres in depth as well. And that's what we got here. You can see what we're doing, we're pruning. So the place is always in working progress here, folks. And one thing I haven't mentioned is the spacing of your hedging. So the taller you want to grow them, the bigger you want to grow them, the further apart you need to plant them. So if you plant them, for example, the first ones that we showed you around the house there, they're about 500, 600 apart, because they're going to grow two metres tall, one and a half two metres tall. If you're going to grow them four or five metres tall, they need to be about two or three metres apart because they need the space to establish their structural integrity. If they don't have a nice space, oh, a nice trunk on them and thick branches and this room to grow, they, they're going to rub against each other and then disease occurs. So each plant needs to have at least two metres space around it if it's going to grow twice in height. Things smaller like English box here, and these ones have been replaced because we've got a lovely horse that likes to walk on them. This is what they look like, and they are spaced about 25 centimetres apart, about there, almost the length of a ruler, let's say, from one plant to the other. And on regular pruning, you can establish a nice tight hedge as well. Now, we are in a cold climate here, very cold climate, and these need to be fed heavily. 
They can this colour, they go a bronzy red colour, they need calcium, magnesium and, and a nitrogen based fertiliser. So I put blood and bone and black grit combined onto these plants. I haven't done a batch over there yet, or actually I did a little bit and you can see they've greened up a bit there. They need to be fed again, so they will green up really well. Now these will grow in the shade and in full sun, very little watering. But again, if you don't water them, they don't grow. All things need their moisture. If you don't water them properly through the course of the year, you will see signs of dieback or the lack of growth. And you know, they start looking a little bit tired looking. So pruning these regularly, you get lots of growth out of these. These can be pruned about four or five, at least six times a year, if you want to. And if you don't cut them back properly, this is another thing about pruning a hedge. Never cut it back to the boundary line of where you want it to be. You always got to cut it back a little bit more because it needs to grow back to that section. If you cut it back to the boundary line, each time it grows back, it gets bigger again. And every time you cut it back to the same line, you're starting to expose old wood there and eventually it becomes a little bit woody on the inside. So you need to cut back so you can allow the new growth to come in and the second prune will be back to the boundary line and here we are and let me show you these ligustrums and this is Krishna <laughs> hey anyway, buddy you good now this plant here folks Ligustrum undulatum, box leaf privet, looks like an English box, grows 10 times faster and needs to be fertilised. This has just been pruned back and you can see it's about to push new growth on. <laughs> oh look I love this, this is my favourite, look at this. Surprises, completely surprises you get in here. That's your grass, your kaikuyu and your buffalo growing through. Now with box leaf privet or ligustrums, they're a great hedge, you can keep them narrow. They get quite woody inside and they do drop a lot of leaf if they don't get their sunlight. Now this is purely just feeding issues and they react and bounce back real quick. Now have a look at this, from here to here. The same plant, on this side here, it seems to be much happier. It's got a lot more green in it, dense and all that stuff too. So feed them well, these need to be fed lots. I would suggest even liquid feeding by spraying it on as a foliar spray. All those leaves will fall off, new growth will come overnight, literally. And another tip, if you've got grass right next to it, no edging on it, don't do that. It's just a no-no. It's a recipe of dis for disaster and that's what's happening here. So we've got to edge all these garden beds here because <laughs> this is about four metres in depth, more than I anticipated it to ever grow. But you can, you can actually cut these back pretty hard, it's about 50% back at least, and you'll find they'll, sp they'll sprout up from the base again. So there's no fear about cutting them too hard, even taking some of this woody stuff out. Have a look at this inside. Look how dry it is inside there, right? So the centre of the plant is over there somewhere, and these are about 12 to 13 years old I reckon. I've been here three years, three and a half years and I've nursed them back to good health but the way I see it now I have to cut them back even harder and let new soft growth come through so I can restructure and get the integrity back nice and proper otherwise we're never going to fill in these gaps. As a hedge you ain't going to get the height because you probably get to two meters. You'd be lucky to get three meters out of this before it becomes top heavy and really woody. So it's not a hedge for screening, but it's a good one for your front boundary line, if you like, from your roadside, because it'll grow real quick and give you that privacy you need if you want, but not as a neighbouring fence uh, for high, high buildings or tall buildings with windows. You want to see a bit of competition? We've got the conifer versus the Fertinia robusta here, folks. Now these in the last three years have doubled in size. I haven't pruned them once because I want them in the natural form, but they really prune well. They've got a large leaf, they do a beautiful bright, bright red leaf, new growth on it, and then they, it's followed by a cluster of creamy white flowers on top. Now they can make a bit of a mess, you can see what's going on there because they do shed their leaves a little bit, but as a hedge you can keep this down to about a metre wide and this will grow to six to eight metres tall if you allow it. We're already pushing four metres or five metres here, comfortably and they haven't been pruned yet so if I was to take the sides back on this they'll shoot straight back up there and I will expose a lot of the dry wood because it's eventually I'm going to lose my pathway by cutting it back you'll get a lot of exposed hardwood but you'll get new growth from the bottom so they are very reactive and very forgiving on a hard prune as well so if you need something to screen a boundary line and you can keep them narrow that's a good plan next to that I'd go an olive tree have you ever hedged an olive tree they look Mwah. <laughs> what? Your camera shy now? What's wrong? <laughs> Come on.
One thing about hedging, folks, is you've got to establish one thing in your own mind, and that's whether you want to be out there hedging your plant on a regular basis. And it means every season almost, or maybe every second season. So there's two ways you can go with your hedge. Formal, which means regular pruning and maintenance, because they can grow out of control, because you'll end up selecting a plant that's much bigger by nature in its own growth rate to the space you're providing. Or you can select a plant that's nice and narrow, or leave it so you don't have to prune it. So if you've got the space to grow the size, that's a great way to do it because it doesn't require you to be out there too often. But if you haven't got the space, then try and pick something smaller. If you need the height, you're gonna go for a plant that is a stricter, upright growth, and maybe not necessarily evergreen. It may be deciduous as well. So you're gonna to have to sacrifice a little bit of, you know, the privacy during the off season to be able to avoid having to prune it on a regular basis. So as we spoke about these ones here, the conifers, these, they need a regular prune because these are pruned and our driveway, just over there, isn't pruned. And they are huge. So the same plant, you can see what they look like in their natural form. If I don't prune them, if I prune those, it'd be a nightmare and I'm not gonna do that. This is enough here. But here's another one that's informal. This is Viburnum tinus. Now, I spoke about the front boundary lines. You can probably grow it on the, on the side boundary to give yourself a little bit of privacy, but you ain't gonna get much taller than two, two and a half meters with a viburnum. Uh, this is a beautiful plant. I love it to death. It grows naturally at about two, two and a half meters in height. I may get it up to three meters maximum. Free form. Now you can prune this as well, but I don't like, one thing I don't like seeing is a large leafy plant that's pruned regularly on the hedge. Like the, the Fatidia robusta that I mentioned, you can prune it, but it's gonna look a lot woodier, but eventually it'll grow back, but it just doesn't look right. It looks like a bad haircut. And that's the same thing with the Viburnum. It's a slightly smaller leaf, about half the size of the Fatidia, and it grows freely, slow growing. It does need its water, it needs plenty of sunlight and a beautiful amount of flowers. In full flight, this is completely covered in white. You can't see a single green leaf on it. And the beautiful vibrant red stem like that there, on a beautiful spring day, it is just an amazing sight. So Viburnum tinus is a beautiful plant again, front boundary line to give you a bit of privacy from your, your roadside if you like, or if you've got low fences, that's another one to do it. But if you prune it, It'll look okay. I wouldn't. And for my favourite of all time plants as a hedge, for front yard, courtyard, large garden, small, tall, narrow and even wide is the Marea paniculata. Now that is a just, it's just an amazing plant. Super dark green leaf, it reminds me of a gardenia. It has a, a lime green new growth leaf on it. Dainty leaf, so it's nowhere near as big as a gardenia and a beautiful perfume white cluster of flowers. We can prune those down or I can prune them down to about 30 centimetres in width and it's very, very forgiving. It fills in beautifully so you don't see any of that hard wood inside. An easy plant to grow, fast growing, can be kept to about one metre tall up to six metres tall. And with a perfume like a gardenia, it's to die for. As long as you don't have hay fever problems or allergic to anything like, anything like that, it's a perfect plant to grow in a courtyard, front yard, backyard. mama has got it at her place and I prune it on a regular basis. Check it out at your local garden center. Other things to think about folks when you're picking a plant is the position, the, the amount of sunlight, the space you have for it to grow. And you can see here, we've got the ornamental pears and they're used quite commonly to grow along boundary lines. If you've got the space and even conifers, pencil pines like this, you can go with the, the green pencil pine, you can go with the swain's gold or the sky rockets as well, which are a great uh, hedge if you like to create. And you can just take the tops off those, easy to maintain. So, and potosporum is another one, a very popular one is, is a potosporum. Uh, James Sterling and uh, silver sheen. The silver sheen is a smaller version. Silvery leaf, quite a common plant. Easy to grow, needs a regular prune, similar to the ligustrum as well. So they're the other choices and there are plenty of others out there at your local garden centres. The best thing you can do is go to your local garden centre and ask them what they stock to suit your local region and climate that you have and especially the size of your garden as well. Now if I missed anything, please feel free to share photos and names of plant varieties that you may be growing in your garden to share with everybody else so we all have a chance to choose some of the best varieties out there to grow as a hedge, formal or informal. 
Now one last thing folks, we are changing our website, our system in our website, so what we're doing now with all those wonderful specials that we run day in and out are going to become very exclusive to our VIP members. So if you're not a VIP member already, it's time to sign up. We're going to have a link there below to give you all the details and information as to what you get as benefits by becoming a VIP, apart from the four magazines we give you as well. You're going to get 40 to 50% off everything online all the time, every time, and in most cases, free delivery across Australia as well, plus many more other benefits. Just follow the link below and see and read all about it, and hopefully you sign up and start enjoying the great benefits and deals we have every day for you. From Eva Silly, Maresi. That's Vasili'sGarden.com.